G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome to my channel. Well, what I wanted to do today was something a little bit different and I wanted to show you some positions uh, that I got into some uh, coins that aren't paying off at the moment. So I'm in the negative, I'm down a few percent. Now this is the one that I'm down the most in, Unibright. And I'm not trying to bag Unibright, I'm just trying to give you a perspective of, you know, if you're not... Uh, you know seeing profits it doesn't automatically mean you should just sell it depends if I was a trader like a day trader and things like that I would have got out of these a long time ago but I'm not I'm an investor and I'm going to show you why I don't just simply jump out of uh, any positions too quickly without sort of checking now in all fairness Unibright I didn't do any research on this when I bought into it. I just saw a lot of stuff on Twitter, on YouTube and things like that. And I was like, this sounds like a good project. I want to buy into it. And I didn't check the charts at all. So that was a silly mistake by me, but it's not all bad news. So the thing with Unibright is it hasn't been around for that long. So we can't really scroll out and get a whole stack of history. It's a fairly new project. So we basically just have to, you know, Look at what's available and we don't have a lot. So what I've done here is this green line here, this is where I bought in. So I need to be above this green line to be in profit. So as you can see, I'm a long way off at the moment. But what I want you to do is look at these trend lines here. So these white ones. This is, you know, outside of this really big spike. This is where it's what it's been doing. So it's here's it's coming down. The highs are getting lower, but more importantly, the lows are getting higher. So this is what we call an ascending wedge. And these blue lines, this is you know roughly the average price that Uni, uh, Unibright has been trading uh, for a while. So as you can see, it's been above, it's even been below a little bit and back here, but roughly it's trading within, within this area. And this is a classic example of an ascending wedge uh, where it's all starting to coil up. Here was the, kind of the low, and here was the high. We did have this, but we'll just leave that out there. And now we're coiling, and it's just starting to get tighter and tighter and tighter until somewhere into around here, there's going to be a breakout. Now, will it break out to the upside or the downside? Who knows? You know, I'm not Nostradamus. I can't predict the future or anything like that. But this looks to me like a classic ascending wedge. I think at some stage, this is going to get to its kind of boiling point uh, and it's going to hope, hopefully pop off to the top and then I'll be back in profit. And again, we're really, really early in the cycle, so I'm not really too worried. Yeah, I'm down about, I think, 26% from where I bought in, which is roughly here to sort of roughly where it is right now. So yeah, that hurts a little bit. But again, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not worried at all. Could this fail? Absolutely, 100% it could. I didn't put a lot of money into Unibright. I have put in, you know, like maybe 1%, I think 1.5% of my total portfolio into Unibright. But I did do my research, not the charts unfortunately. I looked into Unibright and what they're about and I like Unibright and I'm glad I bought in. I'm not, you know, devastated that I'm down 20, 30% at the moment because they're very early in the project and we're very early in the cycle. And since I've come back and checked uh, the charts, I'm still pretty happy. This is just a classic wedge and I think it's going to break out to the top. But I've got a ways to go before I'm back in profit. But that's the difference between, you know, day traders and leverage trading and all of that. They're in and out of trades so quickly. I'm an investor, so I'm in it for the long term. So if it takes me six or seven months to get back here before I'm in profit, then so be it. I don't think it's going to take that long, but look, it might. But by the looks of this chart, I'm going to say somewhere around sort of October, this should have made a move. It could be to the downside. That's absolutely possible, but I think it's more than likely going to be to the upside. And don't get me wrong, I don't think it's just going to rocket and go straight up here or anything like that. I think it will just coil. It'll break out of here, much like the Bitcoin chart, and then it'll have a move. Maybe we'll uh, retrace a little bit and then it'll have another move and we'll trade sideways and eventually we're going to break out above this line and I'm going to be in profit. That's my personal opinion, not financial advice, but I just want you to be able to, you know, as I said in videos before, if you really want to get into investing, being able to read charts is probably one of the most important things. Number one, you've got to be able to do your own research. Look into projects. Don't just simply buy into them because other people have. Now, yes, I did buy into uh, Unibright 
but it wasn't so much because other people had. It's just it had some hype around it. I didn't FOMO in. I just didn't hear it and jump in. But a lot of people were talking about it. I had a look at the team. I had a look at the, uh, the roadmap and all the rest of it. And I was like, yeah, I want to get into this. But what I didn't do is come and check the charts first. So that was a silly mistake of me in some ways. But again, I'm not too worried because this is a classic ascending wedge pattern. And I believe we're going to break out. Uh, and in the not too distant future, it might take till next year. But I'll be back in profit again. But currently, Unibright's my biggest loser. And again, I've only got three. I've got three that aren't in profit. Uh, and on occasions, depending on the market, some other ones drop into not profit. But most of them are only out of profit by, you know, maybe 4%, 5%. Uh, it's just this one that generally sits somewhere between sort of 40% uh, non-profit. And I don't know, I think it's got up to about 18% non-profit. But again, I'm still confident that I'll, you know, be in profit in the not too distant future. So let's go have a look at Digibyte. So I got into Digibyte as well. But likewise, here's the green line. Here's where I got in, roughly around about there. And so it's going down. So again, I'm out of profit at the moment. I think I'm about five or six percent or something like this on Digibyte. But we need to have a look at what the overall trend is. So it had this massive spike up here, and yes, it's had a really hard sell off. Obviously, come a long way down. Tipped off here, so the highs are getting lower, but the lows are getting higher. Every low sets a higher position. And again, this is just a classic ascending wedge position. And this is the average price that it's been in. It's been below at times, it's been above at times, but the average price is in here. So it's currently sitting in uh, its average price, but we're oh so close to that trend line. Now look, I could be wrong and it could break to the downside, who knows? Again, I'm not Nostradamus, I'm not a savant, I can't predict the future, but I do understand charts. I've been able to read them, I've been looking at them for a while, and most of the time, the charts you know, give you a good indication of what happen, what is going to happen. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the trend is your friend. And the trend since way back here, so this is in April, it's going up. Until I see something that changes my mind, i.e. it breaks out of this, if it drops below here, and particularly if it sort of breaks these lows over here, absolutely, I'll probably get out and I'll just have to accept the loss. But at the moment, there is a trend of the lows are getting higher and this is likely going to coil up and I'm not too far off, I'm only just out of profit. So even if it breaks this trend, but stays within this medium range and we just travel sideways here for a while, I'm not too worried. It'll be once we start to break this low over here, this low over here, and particularly this low over here, absolutely I'll be worried and I'll likely have to get out of it then and just accept my loss. But I'm following the pattern. And what we need to do sometimes is this is daily charts. So again, daily charts aren't good for uh, beginners. Look at weeklies and monthlies. They're gonna give you a better idea. Once you understand those and get the bigger macro picture, then you can start to look at the micro picture and you can even go down into the minutes and hours and things like that. But what I wanna do here is this is Digibyte since April this year. So I'm gonna scale out a little bit. I'm gonna scale out a little bit more. We've been here before. We've been well above here before. Now let's see if this chart will go back far enough. It might not, but Digibyte's been a lot higher before. All right, this is only going back to 2019, so it's not going to show, but we have been above these levels before and way above these levels before. So that is why I'm not too concerned. Again, that's my price I've bought in. I'm out a little bit, so be it. Digibyte. Uh, has uh, it's been around for a little while and it's been higher than where we are before so again we've been way up here so we've been above this high before and I'm sure if I found another chart uh, it'd go back even further so I'm in loss at the moment but I'm not panic selling this is the key indicator again we've been above this price before and we are now in an uptrend an obvious uptrend yes we're gonna have spikes where it goes really high but the lows and really since back here since the 25th of March. So that's basically right after uh, the pandemic. The pandemic, I think, was somewhere here back in March. We had that sell-off. Since then, it's just getting higher. Every low is a new high. 
I don't know what else to say. I, I expect this to break out to the upside. And it's the charts that are telling me. It's not a 100% rule. Sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes it's deceiving. But the macro trend, so the overall trend of cryptocurrencies, is they are on the way up at the moment. But they don't just go skywards all the time. Like this is unsustainable. That's why it had such a heavy correction. Let's get the measuring thing out. Let's go from, let's just go from here. So Digibyte pumped 438% in about a month. That's not sustainable. It can't do that forever. So obviously there's going to be a retracement. But it is quite possible that it does something like this once we get to the end of this pattern. It could be the other way. It could be down. Who knows? But that was always going to happen. And again, I looked at this and I thought, yep, this could have kept breaking out to the upside. I wasn't sure. But I was sure that this was happening. The lows were getting lower, that the average price was here, so I was all right accepting a little bit of a loss. Now we just gotta wait and see what happens here. And same thing, look, this might break out of this trend line and just travel sideways for a while first before it breaks up or breaks down, who knows. But I think it's gonna break up and I think it's gonna be pretty soon. So I'm not scaling out a Digibyte. Yes, I'm in a little bit of a loss. Again, I think it's five, six percent or something I'm in a loss for Digibyte. I'm all right with that, and so we can get rid of that now. Now, last but not least, so Verge. I got into Verge as well, same kind of thing. I had a look at, you know, the sort of, the more macro picture, and again, since back in sort of uh, May here, it's just been setting higher lows. It obviously had its big pump, much the same as uh, Digibyte. Of course it was gonna retrace, but this is sort of roughly the average, other than where it's pumped really high, and other than where it's dropped really low, but we have this pattern sort of happening here. And so I'm only in a loss, but likewise with other coins, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's see where Verge has been before. So this is where we are currently. I need to get to here to be in profit again. Look where Verge has been before. So back in 2018, May 2018, it was way higher. So this is the bear market that obviously happened. It all sold off. And look at this. This is what we call accumulation. It's just been sitting roughly around uh, these prices for such a long time. Again, this is accumulation all here. It's come down a little bit lower. And now it's just starting to make higher highs. So I'm not panicking. And look. If I lose and this turns to zero and goes to nothing, so be it. I haven't put a ton of money into any of these projects. Unibright, not a lot. Digibyte, not a lot. Verge, not a lot. More than a couple of hundred dollars, but I haven't put thousands of dollars into e in uh, any of them. So if I lose, look, in total I might lose a thousand or two dollars if all three of these go to zero. But if just one of them does all right, I'm likely to, you know, triple, quadruple, who knows, even more the money that I put into them. So learn to read charts, understand the overall market. And again, when you see things, this is a, a very slight one, but it's still uh, that ascending wedge. The lows are still getting higher over here. Obviously we had the peak, so the lows were getting lower for a while, but it's set its low out of this run. And now the lows are starting to be higher and we'll have to wait and see, does it break out to the low side? This is the average price range roughly, or is it gonna break out to the upside? Last but not least, let's go over to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, we're still trading within that range. So again, that roughly 11,000 kind of 300, you can say down to 11,200, up to 11,000 kind of 900 dollar range. Yes, we've broke out above uh, and it was a, a fake out. And we pulled back down below, but again, we've really set our low. So we can take this low and drag it down just a fraction. We won't worry about the wicks too much. Still ranging. It's probably going to range for a while. We'll have to wait and see. But it is the weekend, so the weekend's here. Traditionally, there's a bit of a sell-off over the weekend of cryptocurrencies, but not always. There are weekends where it does the complete opposite and really pumps. So we'll have to wait and see. 
Now, these uh, lines are different. This green line isn't my buy-in line. I bought in uh, a lot cheaper. I got in back here around the kind of roughly $5,400 to $7,400 range, sort of dollar-costed average and averaged into Bitcoin a little bit. So that's where we're at. Bitcoin still ranging, waiting to see what happens, but we're outside these trend lines. And the same as the other charts. This is the daily charts. It's hard to understand what the trend is sometimes, particularly if you're new. Go to the bigger time frames. But if you do decide to use the daily charts, let's just scale out. Let's see where we're at. So it's going to take a, a minute or two. All right. We've been here before. This is not the first time Bitcoin's been here. And it's been higher. And this is that, again, ascending wedge. It's done this before. So the lows are getting higher. The highs are getting lower. But this time, we've broken out of uh, the trend lines. And now we're just waiting to see what it's going to do. Could it come back uh, and bounce off this trend line? Absolutely. I don't think it's going to. I think it's possible we come back and bounce off the 10,500. But I think it's more likely we do a little bit of sideways trading like we did here in this range before we finally break up and get to this $12,500 level. We'll probably push through it and then we'll come back and use, start to use it as support. Anyway, that's it from my spiel. So again, we've got to look at the broader range of things. I'm not worried about any of these trades. Number one, I haven't put, uh, they're not trades. Uh, they're just uh, buy-in positions. I'm not worried about those buying positions. We're early in the piece. Uh, and again, the charts are the same. Almost all cryptocurrencies at the moment have these ascending wedge patterns. That is a bullish sign. And Bitcoin has broken out to the upside. And a lot of the others will probably do the same. Not financial advice, just personal opinion based on my time in the space. And these things eventually are likely to start push higher. This is quite possibly something like this this is that accumulation phase and see the highs were getting lower but the lows got higher and eventually it broke out pull back broke out a little bit pull back traded sideways and eventually it just starts to push up these patterns have repeated over and over again and not just in cryptocurrency markets in all markets unless a project is legitimately dead then this just keeps going down until it gets to zero. But look at oil. Oil got to minus, I think it was minus $50 or something. So technically oil is dead when it goes to zero or below. But it's come back. Now I don't think Bitcoin's going to zero and I definitely don't think Bitcoin's going to uh, minus $50. But read the charts. Follow the macro trend. The macro trend, you could really say since sort of way back maybe over here, since January 2000, oh, not even. If you really uh, want to do the whole macro trend, Bitcoin has been in an upward trend since its beginning, since its inception. And this is only 2014. Yes, there are going to be pullbacks. There's a pullback here. There's a pullback here. There's a pullback here. There's a pullback here. There's a pullback there. There's a pullback here. There's a pullback here. Pull here. That is what happens. But it, uh, you know, eventually over time, it goes up. Anyway, I've rambled on a little bit too long. Hopefully it wasn't a ramble and you've learnt something. Uh, it's the weekend. I'm just waiting to see what happens. It wouldn't surprise me if we get a bit of a pullback, but I am expecting it to stay within this range and if anything, find some support off, uh, you know, again, the 50-day moving average or the $10,500 moving average. If we are uh, not moving average, $10,500 uh, support line if we sell off that far. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.